we're so glad you've tuned in today to join us here on Lenny Kathy with our Bibles, with our notebooks. Get yours and make a note of these scriptures we're talking about and meditate on them. They'll help you your entire life. I want to go back today to some of the things that John Lake said. I know people are going to send emails and want to know what book I'm reading from. It's John G. Lake, his life, his sermons, his boldness of faith. And it was put together by Gloria Copeland. Um, it's from Kenneth Copeland Publishing Company. But John G. Lake, and it's the one that's colorful. I think it's the only book about him that's got a colorful mm -hmm. um, cover, and it's thick. It's the thick one. But I'm going to read again what, um, what I closed the program with yesterday. It's so vital. I'm going to read it once again. John Lake said, you know, he was very eloquent and he was very um, deep. And he said this one sentence about the great exchange of our filthy rags for the righteousness of Christ and the fact that the Lord comes and lives within us. He said, Christ is at once the spotless descent of God into men mm. and the sinless ascent of man into God. All right. Now, people are going to want to write that down, so just take a moment and say it again real slowly. I want to get it again as well. Christ is at once the spotless descent of God into men and the sinless ascent of man into God. Well, that's good. He was God coming down into man, and he did no violence to his Godhead, no damage, when he united to man. But he is God. Being glorified as he took on man, he did no injury to man, but he magnified man by taking man on. Mm. It is God incarnate. It is God living on earth. That's the incarnation of Jesus Christ. But I want to read what, um, what a very perceptive young man said to Lake after listening to that teaching and a lot of the teaching that we've done on these programs about having the right image inside of us, the image of God. He knew he needed to meditate on it and to keep it coming into him. So he said, this lesson on identification has thrilled me through and through. I laid your manuscript down and went back around my daily business. But my mind kept coming back to it. That's a great thing. It sure is. I'm going to read it. See, he made a decision. He made a determination. I'm going to read it over and over with all those scriptures every day. And Lake said, I, I wanted him to tell me why. He wanted to see what the young man would say. He said, I'm going to do it for this reason. It is not mine yet. That is such a profound statement. These great truths in the word, they're not ours yet until we meditate and read them over and over, ponder them. Think about them, speak about them, act on them. So it's always the thing that you hear people saying, mental assent is not good enough. These have to become a part of your being before they really can work for you. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And this young man knew that. Mm -hmm. He said, it's not mine yet. It is not a part of me. I remember when I took up Latin, I studied it for two years before Latin became mine so I could translate English into Latin and Latin into English. Did you know I took Latin in high school? Did you? Yeah, Were you I did. How many years? Just the one or two? Two years. Two years. Now, has it helped you? It's evidently it's helped you in your A study. A little bit. Uh, in your study of the word and yeah. different things and root words to other words. Yeah. 
Yeah, because most me too. Uh, of the English root words come from Latin. Uh -huh. Other languages too, but especially Latin. I studied it on my own. You, you were forced to study it under a teacher. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and we all feared her too. Oh, I tell you. Um, so he said, now I know about this incarnation. See, he had learned from Lake about it. He said, I know about this indwelling of God. I know my legal rights, but it is not mine yet in a practical way so I can use it. The devil has me at a disadvantage still, but I will stand before the devil just as Jesus stood before the devil yet and defeat him. So Lake said, that young man has the same life as Jesus had. He has the same Holy Spirit as Jesus had. Friends, you are a son of God. You are a partaker of the divine nature. That's what you read in Peter. That is incarnation. Plus that you have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you. You have the nature of God in you. You are his child. You have the name of Jesus. After a little bit, this truth will get hold of us. And after a little while, it will master us. He says, this is yours. All he wants of you is to go and act normal. <laughs> he Boy, means that's good. normal for knowing who you are in Christ. Uh -huh, uh -huh. That's normal for the that's Christian. That's normal for the believer, yes. Glory to God. Isn't that wonderful? It Thank is. Thank you for reading that. And I have other scriptures, you know, that, that say that too. 1 John 4, 17, uh -huh. as he is, so are we in this world. Let's take just a minute on that because there's so much meat in those few words. I can barely take it sitting here. Say it again and then let's talk about it. Let's break it down. In 1 Corinthians 3.21, when somebody read me that, I said, that's in the Bible. <laughs> it says, all things are yours. All things. Wow. All things God's made on this earth are yours. All the promises are yours. But let's go back to 1 John 4, 17. All right. As he is where he is now, so are we. Well, we know that's true because we're seated in heavenly places next to him. We read that in Ephesians. But it's talking about that being manifest on the earth. In other words, as he is in heaven, John is saying, so are we on the earth. So it's a part of the on earth as it is in heaven revelation, which is nonstop everywhere in the it, word. It is. And if we get a grip on this, we can do like the woman in Singapore did. I heard this testimony. She, had, she was in Joseph Prince Church. And she had heard him preach on this scripture, 1 John 4, 17. As Jesus is, so are we in this world. And she had been to the doctor and they told her she had breast cancer. She had a lump in her breast and it distressed her as it would. And she had the medical report they'd given her and she went home and she put it on the kitchen table and she sat down and looked at it. And she remembered this scripture, 1 John 4, 17. As he is, so are we in this world. She said, Jesus, do you have a lump in your chest? Hmm. Well, we know he doesn't. She said, Jesus, do you have cancer in your chest? And she knew he didn't. And she held that report up to him. And she said, neither do I in Jesus' name. Mm. That's all she said. That was enough. That's she a went, real key, I'll tell you. She went back to the doctor, Len, and it was gone. Just her faith in that realization killed the life in that cancerous tumor. That's right. Which was obviously photographed, x-rayed, 
uh, mammogrammed, biopsied, and everything else they do in discovery. And uh, that realization, uh, as he is, so are we in this life, that killed the cancer. It did. It killed the spirit life that nourished that cancer from the dark side. And that to me is overwhelming. Just her realization of that. Well, do you realize that Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil? Yes, Was he did. that a work of the devil? Wow, yeah. It sure was. So, her diligence, her distress. She I was convinced. I believe it turned into determination, and the Lord tells us to plead our case. Mm -hmm. I think she was mad. Mm -hmm. I think she got mad. I think that was good. In a great way. Yes. And said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. My Bible says I am the same way Jesus is. Mm -hmm. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. What is that doing in my body? <laughs> yeah. It's trespassing. Uh -huh. And she vehemently said that to the Lord. Hey, you don't have this in your chest. So you said, as you are, so am I in this world. So I shouldn't have it. And that was faith. Mm -hmm. And that was determination. That was revelation and total belief in a scripture. Mm -hmm. It worked. Gave power to the word of the living God. And this works for fear. It works for all kinds of different things. And uh, we're going to find out more about what this scripture means and a lot more right after this. Do you ever feel the devil holds you down? Help break through difficult times with this special two CD set from Len and Kathy. With your donation of $45 or more, you'll receive God of the Breakthrough, 12 victorious songs to prepare you to stand against the devil. Oh, the God of the Breakthrough is coming to visit my house. This has victorious songs from beginning to end, songs that will bring you up out of difficult times and put you on the road to victory. Learn how to use God's authority to boldly cast the devil from your life with Not To Me You Don't. What does that mean? That's, I know, tell them. That's the authority of the believer, how you talk to the devil to get him out of your life. Show your support for TCT and create the breakthrough you need to rise to victory. Call 866-338-5033 to get this special offer. Well, now I'm mad. <laughs> I'm mad as I got talking about this precious girl in Singapore that was given such a bad report by the doctor. I'm tired of women getting that report. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's great to raise money for research and to draw attention to that, but there's something even greater, and that is getting rid of it totally, mm, yes. rebuking it, refusing to accept it. If you've been given a diagnosis like that, the Lord's had you tune in today, and I declare you free of that. Any kind of cancer, any kind of lump or tumor in your body, the Lord said, as he is, so are you in this world. He doesn't have tumors. He doesn't have lumps. He doesn't have disease in his body. So I command those things to leave your body mm -hmm. in the name above every name. Mm -hmm. Now you say, I agree with Kathy. Yeah. I agree with Kathy. I agree with Jesus. All you have to do is side with Jesus instead of the works of the devil. Stand up and begin to praise him because you are free of that. And I want you to call the prayer partners. I want you to email us and tell us that you went back to the doctor and it was gone. Yeah. You stand strong in that in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Sometimes you have to get mad. Somebody said, I think a wise person, nothing really gets done until somebody gets mad. Amen. Well, we need to get mad at the yes, works of the devil. Yep. There's no sickness in heaven, Lynn. No, there isn't. There's no trouble in heaven. The one person that tried to call tr cause trouble, the worship leader, no offense. Mm, none taken. <laughs> it wasn't me. Hallelujah. Tried to exalt himself above mm. the Lord and he got kicked out. Yep. I didn't see where the Lord humored him and said, well, let me give you another chance. Or let me send you to counseling down there. <laughs> <laughs> because it was total blasphemy against God himself. Mm. And the works of the devil are blasphemy. He's still trying to do it through us, through God's creation. That's the apple of God's eye, man and women. Mm -hmm. He is trying to attack us. I mean, I'm getting a deeper revelation of this as I'm saying it. I want you to be mad more often. <laughs> Not at me, but at the injustice of the enemy attacking God's lovely people. I mean, you think of it. He was tossed out of heaven, mm -hmm. never to return. And so God created man, the apple of his eye for fellowship, and he made him in his own image. And let me tell you something else. Uh, he was the lead, Lucifer was the lead worshiper in heaven. I mean, a gorgeous being, created being like nothing could ever dream. Uh, the Bible talks about how gorgeous and powerful and beautiful he was. And uh, he got lifted up. I will be like El Elyon. I'll be like the most high, he said about his own desires to usurp and take over the throne, basically, and uh, have the angels going around him crying, holy, holy, holy. So anyway, he got kicked out. Jesus was there and he said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. That's fast. Uh, lightning is, is basically a negative discharge of uh, power. And I'll tell you that on that day, in that split second, heaven got rid of a lot of negativity. So here's my point. When he lost his role as the worship leader, uh, who picked up that opportunity and that responsibility? I'll give you just a second to think. One, two, three, that's enough. We take up that role, Kathy. We are the, are the worshipers now. Yes. Now, the angels are still worshiping the Lord there around the throne like Isaiah 6 talks about. But since he was kicked into the uh, uh, abyss, so to speak, uh, separation from God, we now carry that privilege and responsibility to be the praisers, the worshipers, the ones who nonstop around the world give him honor and glory. And this whole thing that you're talking about, so much a part of it. And yet, I'll tell you what, getting mad over injustice will keep you as sharp as a tack. It'll keep you on razor, razor sharp status on your ability to see truth from fiction. That's right. Amen. And we have a just God. He is called the righteous judge. Mm -hmm. And I want to look, Lynn, at uh, Malachi 3, today and get to this today. I've got it. Let me read. Is that Malachi 3, 16 and 17? Yes. You ready for me to read? Yeah. I just want to say first that get mad at the works of the devil mm -hmm. and say you're not putting up with them anymore. Whether it's in your children, if they're on drugs, they're living like the devil himself. You take authority over it. Put your foot down in the spirit. You say, not my kids. No way. I mark them for the Lord. I cover them with the blood. I declare them free of every work of the devil in Jesus name. And then praise him for it and rejoice in it every day. You don't cry over it after that. You get another bad report. Ha 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 ha. You laugh because you know the end result. They cannot help but turn around. You can enjoy your life while they're doing it. Okay, go oh, that's ahead. That's good. That's good. Malachi chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. 
Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened or heard, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. Verse 17, and they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. You ever go to the jeweler and you're looking at something to buy your sweetie for a gift or something like that, and the jeweler takes out the black velvet uh, velour kind of cloth and puts those bright lights down on that diamond or that whatever, earrings or whatever, and it just sparkles. The, if you look in the Hebrew, uh, and this is one of the last things, uh, one of the last chapters uh, that you can get right out of the Hebrew right before the New Testament starts into the Greek, uh, you will see that the Hebrew meaning there is uh, God calls you his sparkling gems. He did it right here. And uh, he likes to just open the black cloth case and take you out and put you there and turn the light on and just look at you and just go, wow, I love, I love her. I love him. I love them. What a, oh, I just love them so much. Look at, look at how they glean and glisten. This is how much he loves you. This is how much he dotes on you. Uh, the word says that you are the apple of his eye. Now the word apple there in the original language means pupil. You're the center of his scope, his vision. He, he wants to dote on you and just look at you like a treasure and just say, look at them. Oh, I just love them so much. I just love them so much. And it's a wonderful thing to respond to that with your own prayer and praise of adoration. Well, Lynn, he said that the ones, he, he put a special book together. Yep. He designated probably an angel, maybe many, to write those down in a book that feared him, mm -hmm. and I believe that means reverenced him. Mm -hmm. If you reverence him, you reverence his word mm -hmm. because he is the living word. He and his word are one and spoke often one to another about him, mm -hmm. about how good he is, about awesome? how great he's been to us all. The Lord heard it and he was so touched and pleased mm -hmm. that a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. Now you bring that into the now. Those that are viewing and that take notes and that act on what they learn, even from our program, as we're talking about the Lord and they're listening and talking and sharing with their friends, they're in this book, Lynn. Yes, they are. <laughs> and the Lord calls them his jewels. He says, they're mine, mm. my special jewels. He adores us so much. Special jewels. and. When, in that day, when I make up my jewels, we don't even know what that means. Mm -mm. We don't know what day he means. We don't know what he means by making up his jewels. Something to do with heaven and eternity, obviously. Yes. Uh -huh. He says, I will spare them. Mm -hmm. We don't even know from what, but it's, it's all good. Yes, it is. I will spare them, and as a man spares his own son, that serves him. Then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. Wow. This is all very, very mysterious, mm -hmm. but it's important to the Lord. And he wanted to let us know. Glory to God. That's something. It really is. I want to be in that book. I want to be one of his jewels. To me, this appears to be a higher, a higher area that we can go into 
that maybe every Christian isn't in. Mm -hmm. Because it's just for the ones that made sure they didn't just talk about the trivia of the natural life nonstop mm -hmm. all day long, but instead, because they were hungry and thirsty to know more of God, mm -hmm. they talked about Him and they thought upon His name and they talked one with another. You need to have a friend that you can talk with about the things of God. Yeah. Of course, you need to have a church and you need to have a special friend at church, a prayer partner and people that you share with. I know the people that I most enjoy, the Christians, I know a lot of Christians, a lot of ministers, but the ones I most enjoy fellowshipping with and eating dinner with are the ones that talk about the Word. Mm -hmm. And oh, the blessing, you're, you're, you're eating natural food and you're eating of the manna from heaven, straight from the Word. And as you're talking, if you'll notice, you always get more revelation. It's because when people get together face to face and talk about how good God is, He comes and sits right in the middle. Praise yes, the he Lord. Does. He said, let's, let's keep going. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, it is so good to gather around the Word of God and we're just so grateful that you are here, that you take time out of your busy schedule to uh, view Len and Kathy. And uh, it's not just a happenstance that you tuned in. The Lord wants you to commit your heart to Him. It's a tremendous thing to give your heart to the Lord. Just say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my life and rule and reign and govern in my life. And I thank you for it. And if you prayed that and made that determination, that decision, there's information on your screen right there on your television or your computer, let us know. And we'll see you next time right here on Len and Kathy.